the impossible city has finally revealed itself, offering a glimpse of the impending catastrophe set to confront the Avengers. This marks the initial trial that Earth and its mighty defenders, the Avengers, are about to face. Beyond the confines of Earth's orbit, the impossible city has come across a new world to unleash its destructive might upon. They are filled with delight at the abundance of cities that Earth harbors, presenting countless targets for their malevolent intentions. Meridian suggests they should find interesting ways to kill them, as finally we see the members of the Ashen Combined, a group of interdimensional city slayers. Each member of the Ashen Combined has chose their own cities to destroy. Idol Alabaster chose the Vatican City. She is labeled as the most eager member of the Combine. She knows well what she desires. She knows what gives her power and how to find it. She opens her wings to show her worship form and commanded everyone to worship her. Next city to hit the wrath of the impossible city is Toronto. As the city smith visited them, city smith is the artist among the Combine. He sees the brick, the mortar, the stone and glass, and steel and pipe, and above, the people as his materials. He chooses his cities not for what they are, but what they can be, what he can make of them. Moving on to the next city is Manila in the Philippines. Lord Anwi visits my countrymen. Lord Anwi is a connoisseur, an expert judge in matters of taste. He seeks out life, cities that never sleeps, the greatest destiny of living, thinking minds, the hustle and bustle of urban life. He hates it, so he brings the gift of respite of stillness of peace as he puts to sleep anyone near him. Next is Sydney, Australia. The dead visits this great city. He is simple as day inscrutable. He is drawn to the burial grounds of civilization in whatever shape they take. If Lord Anwi seeks out life to quiet, the dead gives the quiet life and gives them the chance to revenge themselves on those who have forgotten them as he gave life to all the dead at the cemetery. Lastly, at Helsinki, Finland, Meridian Deadem, together with her army, conquers the city. Unlike her companions, she is indiscriminate. She only desires to consume thinking, intelligent beings to imprison them. As all these events unfold simultaneously, the Avengers are swiftly alerted to the impending crisis. Captain Marvel takes charge, preparing the team for immediate action as they brace themselves to confront the unknown threat. T'Challa catches Danvers' attention, highlighting their lack of knowledge about the unfolding situation and the challenges they are about to confront. Front. Captain America interrupted, but people are dying, T'Challa. T'Challa knows but more will die, including themselves, if they do not win. Insulted by T'Challa's suggestion, Captain Marvel says, I thought I was leading this team. T'Challa expresses recognition of Captain Marvel's leadership, stating, You are, and you brought me onto this team despite the opprobrium surrounding me, because you wanted my counsel. So please accept my counsel and lead us. Captain Marvel exemplifies true leadership by humbling herself and taking charge. She issues commands, directing Iron Man to retrieve the raw data from the satellites while enlisting Vision to assess the threat level based on this acquired information. Iron Man went to look for anything regarding the impossible city. He found nothing from the archives of SHIELD, SWORD, ARMOR, and ONE, or any other acronym groups. However, he was able to send Vision some video news feed, anything that was uploaded to the internet. Upon receiving the data, Vision promptly assesses the situation and provides concise summary. Money lies under a massive entropic attack. Helsinki is facing an army of adversaries who seem to be capturing prisoners. Toronto is encountering a metrokinetic assault. Vatican is experiencing a high-level Psy event. Sydney is dealing with apparitions of ghosts. Their base of operations is situated in low Earth orbit. Black Panther is satisfied with the information as he believes even a small blade can kill, as he gave Captain Marvel the go signal. Captain Marvel has some last-minute words as she yells, hit them hard, put them down fast, and above all, save lives. Avengers assemble. In Vatican City, Idol Alabaster persists in demanding the people's worship, but Thor strides forward. His voice echoing as he shouts in response, Ho, oh, is this a god I see before me? For I know the ways of gods. Worship is courted with blessings or threats, not stolen with psychic tricks. Idol Alabaster felt deeply insulted as she insisted that Thor offer her his worship. But Thor strongly disagreed, preparing himself for battle instead. Meanwhile, in Toronto, a colossal catastrophe has struck the city at the hands of City Smith. Despite the destruction unfolding around him, City Smith finds an odd appreciation 
location for the artistry before him. Buildings engulfed in flames, others being demolished, and people desperately struggling to escape the chaos. Amidst the panic screams of citizens, City Smith remains captivated by the unfolding spectacle. In the midst of his strange appreciation, a mysterious voice begins to speak to him. I don't know, pal. Alien super terrorism as an art form is a little, what do they say, pedestrian? City Smith felt threatened as he yells, a critic, show yourself. Iron Man deactivates his stealth mode, emerging from the shadows to reveal himself. With determination in his eyes, he prepares to unleash a devastating blast upon City Smith. Sydney is plagued by haunting apprehensions of the deceased, causing terror and panic among the people who desperately flee in fear. Amidst this chilling scene, Wanda steps forward, her voice resonating with authority as she addresses the eerie phenomenon. I am no stranger to pain, no stranger to ghosts, and nor are you, as I can see, you've left both master you. Wanda continues to talk as she introduces herself. I am the Scarlet Witch, and I have mastered my pain, my ghost, and much worse besides, and I will not allow you to harm these people. In the streets of Helsinki, Meridian proclaims all those present, including children, as criminals in dire need of correction. His army proceeds to imprison the people of the city. However, just as she makes this proclamation, a voice corrects her from behind, questioning, For what crime? In response, Meridian responds with graceful poise. Any number, criminality is engraved into the organic. They kill, they steal, they lie. And if they have not, then they will. I correct them, and the best, the very best of them, become my children. Vision descends gracefully next to Meridian and said, I am also a synthetic, also a parent, and you offend me to the core of my very being. In Manila, Lord Anwi finds himself encircled by slumbering citizens, patiently awaiting their demise, longing for it to awaken some semblance of emotion within him. He proclaims this profound desire, seeking to feel something through their unfortunate fate. I never do, but perhaps this time will be different. After all, you are here this time. Captain Marvel descends stealthily from behind Lord Anwi, her voice resolute as she speaks. I'll give you that. This time will be different, because this time you've met the Avengers. Lastly, beyond the Earth's borders, within the lower orbit, the Impossible City. A mysterious voice resonates through the enigmatic surroundings of the Impossible City. The Ashen combined purse their obsession. The warriors of this world rise to do battle with them. It's a dance I've seen over and over again. I had another name once. One I can't remember. They took it from me. Now I am called the Impossible City. And now, for the first time in a very long time, I have visitors. How intriguing. As the scene unfolds, Black Panther and Captain America dashes inside the ship. And with that thrilling moment, the comic comes to a close. If you're looking for something else to watch, you can check this video right here.